Welcome back, Dram Fam, to another episode on the Whiskey Diary. So, you want to know about the Clydeside Distillery's first release? Let me explain. So, in this episode, we're going to be taking a look at Stobcross, which is the first release from the Clydeside Distillery, which, according to their website, is the first single malt distillery in Glasgow for over a hundred years. Now, the distillery was established in 2017, and they casked their first spirit in December of that year. So, conceivably, the oldest whiskey that they could possibly have is about three and a half years old. So while this is a no age statement whiskey, we can be fairly confident that the oldest spirit in this bottle is about, about three and a half years old. Now it is bottled at 46%. It is a vatting of bourbon and sherry casks. There is on the back of the tube a little like, slider which has bourbon on one side, sherry on the other, and the slide is about 80% of the way across towards bourbon. So we can assume that it's probably a 20% sherry cask, 80% bourbon cask vatting. It is all natural color, it is non-chill filtered, and you can buy it directly from their website for a very reasonable 45 quid. Now, I'd highly recommend going and checking out the distillery. It's on the docks, uh, pretty much right in the center of Glasgow. And there's a huge amount of history that ties the distillery, the owners of the distillery. Um, their ancestors originally helped build those, that, that, I mean, that whole dockside area back in, I think it was the 1860s. So there's a huge connection there between the distillery and the area. And the whiskey is actually named Stobcross, which is named after a cross which signified the start of the road to Dumbarton in Glasgow. So it's actually on the river on Stobcross Road. I actually got to taste the individual component parts. So the, the bourbon finish and the sherry finish whiskies uh, independently. I was incredibly interested to see how they translate. And to be honest, I think they've translated very well. So enough talking. Let's get down to tasting it, shall we? So we're gonna give this one a go from the uh, 1920s blenders glass. I've obviously had a little bit of this already to get a pretty good idea of what's going on, but let's go for it. straight away on the nose. I always get like a pineapple, mango, tropical fruit flavor. Reinforcing that. Quite a lot of foam bananas, like uh, strawberry foam sweets as well. Kind of a, a general pick and mix kind of candy thing going on. Kind of going along with that tropical note, I get some peach. And maybe even a hint of cola as some of the kind of more maltiness comes through. Smells very light anyway. It's worth noting this is completely unpeated. So the palette. The spirit is incredibly light, incredibly delicate. Orchard fruits, very subtle, um, apple and pear, quite a gentle spiciness, um, a little bit of a straw note going on as well. Nice herbaceousness. It's very light, very floral, and I think that that interplay between the subtle pepperiness, the subtle spiciness, the very, very light spirit and the floral, kind of turn into an almost tea element.
finish wise, I'd kind of put this in the medium category. It's not very rich. It's not especially heavy. And as a result, I feel it it dies off quite quickly. But then again, we're talking about a four-year-old whiskey. Sorry, a three-year-old whiskey. So I wouldn't expect there to be a huge amount of cask influence and a huge amount of character from those casks in it. Uh, I have tried, I've got a bottle of the new make here and I have tried that. I get quite a lot of apple from it. I've, it's quite fruity. It's got a tannic kind of dryness to it as well. And I think that definitely comes across in the finish here. If you've ever had a kind of slightly over brewed tea, you get the tea flavor and then afterwards you get that kind of slightly spicy dry tannic flavor behind. And I get quite a bit of that from this finish. Upon revisiting, getting a little bit more cola out the nose, a little bit more of those straw notes coming from the nose. Bit more spiciness, bit more of those tannic, like uh, tannic tea notes coming forward. And the finish just a bit sweeter. So, in summary, it's a young whiskey. There's no getting away from that. For a young whiskey, it's very good. In my opinion, anyway. There's good flavor there. I don't feel like there's a huge amount of cask influence. Um, I'd like to see this a couple of years older, maybe with a bit more of the sherry in it. I've tried the two component casks and I feel like it could benefit from a little bit more richness. It's fairly in keeping with a Lowland, but I know their, their goal as a distillery was to make it a bit bigger than a Lowland, a bit, a bit heavier and, you know, with a bit more of a kick, I believe they described it as. And I definitely think they're on the right lines. For 45 quid, 46%, it's a fantastic whiskey. I think quite good for beginners and if you're quite into your whiskey, you may find it quite interesting. I'm wondering if maybe it may be a little bit too young for some, but I'd be very, very keen to see what the Clyde side have got to offer in the, uh, in the coming years. But anyway, that's enough from me. Thank you all very much for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can hit the subscribe button down below and you can tick the bell icon to be notified whenever I upload. If you've liked this video, please do click the like button. And on that note, Slanjavar.